and thank you for joining us today in this conversation. My name is Hannah Azwanye. I am an actor and a creative freelancer in the arts industry based in London. And I am thrilled to be joined today by Chika Azwanye. He is an artist, a studio artist with over 30 years experience, born in Nigeria. His works have been exhibited and are commissioned and um, owned across countries worldwide. He is an arts educator, a poet, and he is also the co-founder and vice president of the Nigeria Art Society UK, NASUK, and I'm very delighted he's also my dad, <laughs> and I'm thrilled to be having this conversation with him today. We're going to be talking about dealing with disruption through art um, as part of the annual EWO conference um, this year online symposium. So... Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for joining me and everyone here. Um, I wanted to start by asking you a question about how how we're dealing with the current situation. So we're in a very strange moment at this time uh, where many lives across the globe are being disrupted in many different ways. Um, we're living through a global pandemic and we are also experiencing the light being shone on historic and perpetual violence uh, against black people and you know the lights being shone on racism in the wake of George Floyd's death um, and I just wanted to ask you first off how what role you think art has to play in these moments in these moments of rupture and difficulty well um, I think the um, the way I would look at it is um, it's not just what happens to people, it's how they, they deal with it, what happens to them. Mm -hmm. And that's how I look at what is happening now with um, this COVID and, um, and what is happening all over the world now with the killing of George Floyd. Um, the, the role of art in terms of what's going on now is, is very, very important. And if you, uh, you may it may not look um, uh, you know, it may not be clear, but if you look at all the protesters, mm -hmm. you see that they're all carrying placards. These are all works of art. In fact, uh, yesterday I saw somebody carrying uh, uh, a very nice portrait of um, George Floyd, you know, carrying on the street. That's art. And if you look around, uh, on the walls of estates where you have, you know, you see that there's quite a lot of um, um, murals, like, yeah, yeah. Um, calligraphy, um, graffiti, art, etc. So art is always in the forefront of, of um, capturing uh, the moment of, of history. It's like an, a form of archiving. It's a, yes, so. it's an archiving, it's about information, it's, it's everything that, that you can uh, think of, you know. But art is not just limited to the visual arts. We were talking here about, uh, uh, um, you know, poetry. You know, a lot of po people are writing poems about this, what is going on now. You have, um, maybe they, they might put it in films later, you know. And we artists are also uh, documenting what is going on now in the world. So it's... Um, it's a kind of a dichotomy, you know, it's a very serious issue, but at the same time, it, uh, it gives us uh, um, things to, to work on, mm -hmm. uh, not just for, for now, but for posterity. That's how I look at it. So jumping back quite a few years, yes. um, you obviously grew up in Nigeria mm -hmm. and you grew up through the Biafran War another moment of rupture for many, many people and something right. that many people listening to this will identify with. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered if you could tell us a bit about your experience of that. Well, you know, I've, I've always talked about my experience um, during the war. Uh, it, was, it wasn't a pleasant experience. It was very difficult and um, quite emotional and traumatic. Um, uh, I, I try to run away from this word trauma. <laughs> Anytime I hear trauma, I just There's get stigma you know, attached to that stigma word. Actually, it? Yeah, but, you know, um, but the, the, the fact is that 
uh, you know, looking back, you know, it gave me quite a lot of um, things to reflect on. Um, it, it kind of changed my, my perspective as a child, as a young person growing up. You know, so it made me kind of uh, begin to, to appreciate things better because we were living a very comfortable life in Enugu. Mm -hmm. Then when Enugu fell, uh, I remember when this shelling was coming from a place called Ninth, Ninth Mile. They, they had already gotten to Ninth Mile and was shelling into Enugu. And then we, were, then we left because, you know, uh, you just have to. You have to flee. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. So that's, that begins the movement, you know, of my, of my, of my journey. And, um, and I was recording all these things. But the, the positive side of it was that when we got to the village, then we started learning the ways of the village people, which was which, are, which was something new and which I liked, like going hunting, <laughs> eating, <laughs> all the stories. eating desserts and eating snakes and all those things. That, these are all experiences which um, I I will always uh, cherish, even though from a very difficult. Um, yeah, they, you know, they yeah. grew from a very yes. traumatic. Yeah. So 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 my my journey has informed my art. Mm. Um, you know, um, also during the, the last um, exhibition we had in Nigerian Art Society UK, we had an um, exhibition on Ladies of Biafra mm -hmm. at SOAS, uh, School of Oriental African Studies. And, you know, um, some of my works there, you know, were about, you know, my uh, this experience mm -hmm. that I have, the trauma. Of, um, of being in that sort of situation as a child, mm -hmm. yeah. And so do, how do you think, in terms of like the physical artworks, experiences like the war or even the gap in your education that yes. you had to have yes. or, or even moving to this country and, yes. the, and the shock of sort of moving from one life to, you know, in a very different context yes. in the 80s? Yeah, it, it, it's it, it's the disruption of um uh, that that is most uh, most worrying in a, in this type of situation. Um, you know, during the war, I don't even know how we did it. Um, as children, we walked so many kilometers that if you ask me to do it now, I would say no. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so there were so many layers. You know, in this uh, 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 scenario, in the sense that even going to school was a bit of a problem for me, you know, uh, because they were bombing children, they were bombing schools, they were bombing churches, they were bombing markets. That is the federal government, you know, Nigeria. So we always, uh, we always had to go to the bush to hide during the day. We come back at night. So there was no room to go to school. And that had a very profound effect on, on me after the war because I, I was put in a class that I was not prepared for. You know, some of the things I learned over the, um, over the years, you know, I was growing up, kind of fizzled out, you know. Um, but um, thank goodness, you know, it's been a lot of hard work that where I am now, um, and I've caught up with most of the things that I missed within, that, within those three years. So it, it had a profound effect, even in, um, in, uh, in deciding my, my work as an artist, mm -hmm. you know, being able to, to have um, an avenue that will enable me, like most artists record events uh, in their lives, you know, what is happening now, what happened during the Biafran War, you know, um, and I know a number of artists that have done it in the past. My, one of my lecturers, Professor Dechuku, Obiro Dechuku, was a war reporter. He was able to document or had sketches of what was happening in the war front. So he was he was there to with, communicate with my, to the world. To communicate to the world. And my brother, the Professor Chukwu Manzoni, was also uh, writing and documenting uh, what was happening then. So people, everybody was doing their own bit, mm -hmm. you know. And and now we can go back and read some of these things. At least have. Um, the true picture of what happened to to us uh, during that war, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm wondering, to what extent would you say that the the act of painting or drawing or creating art mm -hmm. can be a way of 
processing challenging or transitional situations or sort of like a form of therapy mm-hmm. yes. dealing with yes. those difficult moments. Yeah, I agree, I agree with you. I, I think uh, that's that's what it is because um, I, I, I'll give you an example. Going back to the exhibition we had um, at the um, Igbo Conference, uh, not the Legacy of Biafra exhibition, which was linked to the Igbo Conference the year before. Mm-hmm. Um, with all the, uh, starting from the Igbo Conference of that year, um, which is, I think, 2017, um, going to 2018, when we had this exhibition, mm-hmm. and, and listening to a lot of people who, like me, went through that war. And uh, some of them were quite emotional when they were recollecting, recounting what happened during that war, which I myself saw, and which was um, you know, something that I would never ever want to see again. You know? So it was kind of um, like um, a therapy, and uh, not just when we started the exhibition, but when we were even at the stage of the Igbo Conference, which was also, the title was Leg- Legacies of Biafra. Um, that's when I began to, to understand that even though the war had ended 50 years ago, of, of, you know, but it was still yeah, in the consciousness people. of people because you saw people crying, you saw people, adults, you know, who you know, normally uh, would you know, be very strong people. But the, the, the memory coming back became an issue for them. And for me as well, because um, it affected me. But the, through this vision, through all these things, you know, I began to see that yes, it was like a therapy, like something like uh, somebody's pouring cold water over my body and uh, trying to wash out all these, um, you know, stuff. Yeah, I guess seeing it, seeing and communing with other people who've been exactly, through exactly, similar experiences, exactly. a really validating thing. Yes. So that it's not just your story. It's yeah, a story it's of a shared story. it's a shared story, you know. And even people so, who saw more than I did during the war were were also present during the Igbo conference and and they shared their, their experiences, you know. Mm. And for me, the only way I could do this was through art mm. and, and, and and through poetry as well. And know? when you're in the process of painting, what is that experience like? Um, that's <laughs> I, I keep telling people that. Painting is akin to meditation because I, um, sorry everyone, I meditate a lot, <laughs> but um, I, I know thing. it's a good thing to meditate. I meditate every day. So, um, and where you, you're, you're in what is called the brown study, where you lose yourself into the work. Mm-hmm. So the work, the work becomes you and you become the work. So this is not just there, this is my support, this is my painting, and this is me. You gel with your painting, you become one, mm-hmm. you know, because you are, you are now um, working from within. So it's not just healing, it's, it's uh, therapeutic, you know, it's, uh, it, makes, it makes you, it gives you more life, mm-hmm. you know, to, or, you know, makes your life more, what, what, that's why I say to people, even if you don't know how to paint, just go and register for an evening class as to how to paint, or just, just and just empty your emotions there because yeah. it is, it's a healing process. Yeah. yeah. So moving on to your sort of physical art, um, your work straddles different styles and mainly, I'd say, abstract and mm-hmm. stylized works. Yes. And also there are some recurring motifs yes. in your yes. work. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to open that up for you. Well, yeah, you're right. Um, my work is quite uh, eclectic. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, will, I will consider myself an eclectic uh, artist. So I, I vacillate from one spectrum to another, but mainly from having been trained, I, I need to make it clear here, having been trained that how to draw very well, but I, um, I was um, fascinated by the works of Modi Glenny and um, Professor Ucho Keke and uh, Gauguin. Mm-hmm. And um, especially with Modi Glenny and, and Professor Obio Rudechuku as well, um, I I like the the distortion of, yeah. of forms. So so when you when you look at my stylized works, they tend to reflect that. 
And mind you, I come from the Soka school. So you often see elements of Uli. Yeah. Uli, which is the, the body decoration and the wall decoration, uh, uh, or marks on the, on the wall and the body uh, for decorative purposes, which is mainly done by women um, in the eastern part of Nigeria, the Igbo people. So um, if you graduate from Soka, it's your decision to, to move away from Uli, but Uli just there all the time. That so part of your artistic <laughs> part of identity. Artistic identity. Yeah. So everyone that I went to my department, one thing they have to uh, uh, be introduced to is the Isuli and the concept of Uli, which is it's okay because it's our tradition, you know, and we, we need to keep it alive. So I'm even happy that I'm using it in my work. So, um, you know, in answer to your question, you know, uh, that um, my style is basically at the moment, uh, move, move, it's moved from figurative to standardization to abstraction. Mm -hmm. So that is how my work, you know, um, is gradually, you know, always, gradually always evolving. Yes, so yes. You know, having um, traveled uh, from Nigeria, where you have very colorful, uh, you know, even with, with what people wear, very colorful. Yeah. To, Just the world is a bit more colourful than it is in a yes, London context. Yes, so when you come to Europe, you know, everything is just a bit um, uh, toned down. <laughs> so it hasn't, it hasn't toned down for me because yeah. my colours are still, you know, the way they are, yeah. you know. And I, and I love it. And I love my, my, my style and my, <laughs> my, my colours, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, even talking about how work evolves, even just mm -hmm. in this current situation with you know, life as we know it being on hold, like you're mm -hmm. not able to go to your studio. Yes. So like that's even, that has changed how you're working now. Yes, yes. You see, the point is that, that's why I made that statement at the beginning, that it is not so much what happened to you, but your reaction to what happened to you. So what is happening now is that for the first time for many years, I've not, I've not done watercolor, I've not done uh, charcoal, I've not done uh, Conte Crayon, all these things that I used to do in the past, uh, because I was primarily focusing my attention on oil and acrylic. Mm -hmm. But now, this destruction has prevented me, one, from going to the studio where you have so many people milling in and out, so I have, to, I have to look after my health and my family, but also gave me the, the opportunity to be able to say, yes, I could use this time to to think outside the box, to, to be able to do things that I've not done before. Uh, I, I even did a, 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 very, a very beautiful flower, uh, flower in a flower verse, uh, still, like life, still life, still yeah. life, uh, which I haven't done, I have not done for a long, long, long time, you know. And uh, I also love doing, uh, you know, uh, charcoal that, you know, I have not done a long, uh, for a long time. So it's a, it's a change. This change will always bring something new. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, what's going on, going on in America now, and even COVID, is going to change our lives. It's not going to be the same again. Um, uh, the, what is happening now wouldn't have been happening, it couldn't happen, wouldn't have happened up in, the, in the 60s in America. But things have moved on. And maybe the children of the, of the future will, will have a better America than, than now, hopefully. Mm -hmm. so, so we have to look at this from um, different directions. Um, you know, that something happens, it triggers something, and then there's a, a, always a reaction, always a reaction. And this, some of these reactions uh, are positive. And, and drive and, us forward. And drive us or forward, forward or, yes. in a positive direction. In a positive direction. That's, yeah. that's how we have to look at it. Yeah. So destruction is not always bad. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's like a catalyst yeah. you know, that, that propels us to another stage. Yeah. So I'm going to move on to this painting, actually. So, I mean, I feel very lucky to be surrounded by all of your art all yeah. the time. But this is a painting called Migration. And I wonder if you could just talk us through it, like what, what, what it means and what its importance is to you, how it came about. Yeah, well, as you can see, it's, a, it's an abstract painting. 
And so what I wanted to do in this painting, this is actually one of the one of the um, uh, paintings executed at the Legacy of the Afro exhibition uh, at SOAS. Um, it's still a touring exhibition, so this this work will be still be going around for for a couple of uh, years. So the um, the concept behind here is about movement, about displacement, because during the war, um, uh, you know, we kept moving because as soon as we we settled down some in a place, shortly after that, the the federal forces will come. And then we'll, we'll start running again. So we're, we're not always um, in one place for a long time. So it was always this movement, constant movement, becoming a refugee after a refugee. It's a, it's a cycle. You know, it's a cycle. It's a yeah. yeah, throughout the war, for, that, for the three years. So we kept moving. So what I, I did was that um, because we kept moving because we, we, we did not want to be killed. We wanted to preserve our lives. That's why we we kept trying to have uh, be one step ahead of uh, the federal troop. So here I've used um, Enneken Tioba, uh, which is um, uh, in a, a form of this bird that flies very very fast, you know, and um, you know to to say that, and and also other birds that when um, in in depending on the uh, on the country and on the weather, they travel very far. Uh, they migrate. That's how the name of this painting uh, came about. Mm -hmm. They migrate, and then they come back again to the country from where they uh, they left initially. And then it happens every year that way, and they always find their way back. Mm -hmm. But in this case. Um, uh, ours was about preserving life. The birds go there as a matter of, um, you know, freedom. So they can they travel, they come back. Nothing happens to them. But in our in our case, we ha we were running. Yeah. yeah, we were running for our lives. So in a way, um, I use that as a kind of metaphor to um, to explain. That you know, just as the bird was always flying and not perching, so that the, the hunter will not shoot it down. Mm -hmm. So we were always running, so that we we're not killed. Mm -hmm. So that's how this painting came about. And maybe yeah. even because you're saying it, that there's the parallel, but also obviously the bird has its freedom. Yeah. Also, it's a, like a, a hopeful image for you know a future which you might might have been difficult to imagine at the time yes. when you were running yes. and just the, the idea of being able to move out of choice and yes. for you know, eventually to, freedom. Eventually to have our freedom. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't want to sound political, but I don't know whether we, we, we've, we still have that freedom. Uh, well, to some extent, yes. But we hope that, um, that uh, eventually that the world will be finally... <laughs> Uh, over. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's how I feel. Yeah. I wonder, are there maybe two, one or two other pieces that you particularly like, which are maybe a bit different in style from this, or you know, in topic that, that you can talk us through, just to show us a bit more of your work? Um, I have uh, two paintings that I like to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of them is to do with the, uh, because you know the, the Igbo people are known for uh, their um, commerce. They yeah. they are business people, you know, entrepreneurial, uh, entre entrepreneurial, yeah. and um, and they were very proud of it. I'm pr I'm a proud Igbo. You were a proud Igbo. We're all proud Igbos. And uh, to know that after the war, we're giving our parents were giving 20, 20 pounds, and all the money in their banks were frozen. And today, if you go to most parts of the country, you know, um, you see uh, Igbos everywhere, you know. So um, that particular painting was for me to, to show the resilience. Everything is about resilience uh, uh, and the love 
that um, that our people have in their hearts mm -hmm. uh, to to and to be able to help each other in in most difficult uh, situations, um, so that um, eventually we have uh, a situation where I was able to do this painting and used um, our old currencies. One is called uh, Manila. It's a metal. A metal that um, is curved. It's a, almost like a semicircle uh, that we used to use in those days as a form of currency. Mm -hmm. And then there's a cowrie shell, which is also our form of currency. Uh, and you know, just up, up until recently, we were having uh, to do with um, uh, trade and butter, trade by butter. I, I give you something. Uh, I give you something. Okay. You give something back to me. But also, people forget that we have had currencies before even the advent of the white man mm -hmm. to Africa. So nobody's saying that to you, but we do have currency. It, we were organized. Uh, and, and you know that it was being egalitarian. We were also being very, very organized people. That is why um, we have collective um, meetings to resolve issues. And uh, they say it was amazing that it was don't uh, recognize kings. Uh, so that's everything is um, done that way. So this that, that the, the, the painting um, uh, uh, this painting is about that uh, spirit of commerce, you know, spirit of resilience, you know, that in spite of every um, uh, difficulties, in spite of everything that that um, we we go out there to 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 um, to make a living, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in spite of difficulties. Whether man made or, or not, you know, we the evil spirit is uh, it's always it's always there. Always so what what's that artwork called? The, it's called I call it commerce uh, ahia. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the you know. And then the other the other uh, painting is about the, that one uh, the the um, the commerce of, I did in oil, but the the next painting uh, is the the one. Uh, that I did with watercolor. I love your watercolors. <laughs> yes, and uh, it's very, very exciting because um, according to the Igbo, uh, um, Igbo uh, uh, mythology, we have, um, call it the cult of uh, ancest ancestors where we, we pay homage to our ancestors. That's why we, wherever we... Um, there's a, a ceremony or any important event or there, there was always a libation or to the ancestors. They have to drink first. Mm -hmm. And then we, we, we bring the corner knot where we, 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 um, we, um, we then invoke the spirit of our ancestors. So that this particular painting is also talking about being able to, to recognize that uh, as above, so below, that we here are um, in, always in communion mm -hmm. with our ancestors that have that have gone before us. So we always have a link. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when um, the first time I went home uh, during the war, because we were living in Enugu, so we went to the, uh, when we went to the village after the fall of Enugu, um, I saw small houses, almost like a toy, toy they were built like, the real house, but very small. Mm -hmm. So I kept asking everybody, I said, why do we have all these houses everywhere? And then they said to me, oh, you know, that, you know, that these are for our ancestors. So what they were doing, they were eating yam. When they eat, anything they eat, they take part of portion. it. <laughs> and <laughs> then, and I, I, I became part of it. So, and, um, but I don't see a lot of, those uh, houses uh, anymore, you know, and especially now that, you know, things are speeding up in the villages and stuff, you know, modern houses. But, you know, um, the, the belief in our ancestors that they are always looking after, after us is a very uh, important element mm -hmm. in the Igbo uh, cosmology. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's, that's, that's about that painting, you know, this in watercolor, and, um, and what's uh, it called? It's called the gathering. Oh, that's lovely. It's called the gathering. Yes. Amazing. Yes. yes. Thank you. I've got one final question for you. you. Yeah. Um, 
we've spoken a lot about the events of life and how everything has shaped you, all of these different junctures in the road um, from your childhood to now um, as an established artist and all of the you know twists and turns along the way. That Legacies of Biafra exhibition in 2018, so two years ago now, I think it just finished in March, yes. I think, uh, was you know a really remarkable exhibition and moment. Mm. And I just I wonder if in hindsight, what would you from this point say to 10 year old Chike back during the war who was, you know, in, in, a, in a moment of not knowing what was coming next? What, mm. what advice or what message would you say to him? With this life experience behind you. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, I was I would say uh, that um, you know, looking looking back to myself, you know, I would have I would have uh, comforted myself because there's a time I lost every hope, especially with my education. Mm -hmm. You know, not having gone to school for three years was was one of the worst things that actually happened to me. And um, but I eventually caught up. And I'll say to I'll, I'll say to that that chike then, you know that nothing to worry about, that everything is okay, um, you know that I've been able to sort out some of the some of those teething uh, problem teething problem that um, you know we had uh, as our children, you know um, the fears and everything, you know, has been kind of um, and all the healing. Is that's taking place, you know, that that everything uh, is, is fine. That, that resilience which has come up all the way yes, through. Yes. Yes. That's through. why that's why when you go to um Uli, Uli, Uli art, you know, which I have to say was primarily done by women, Igbo women. Mm. Uh -huh. There is this symbol of a lizard. Uh, to me, uh, also the lizard is about resilience, it's about um, <clears throat> of a strength, uh, you know, that he fell, the lizard fell from a height, very, very, you know, height. And he looked around, looked left, looked right, and nobody said, well done, you know, uh, for falling from that height and not, not dying. So in, it, in the lizard's usual way, he shook it, it said, and uh, and congratulated himself. And then um, he went, with, on, his smile, went <laughs> on his way. And uh, he was happy because he said, if nobody congratulates me, I congratulate myself. You know, that is about res res resilience. You know, being able to, being able to overcome um, circumstances, being able to, you know, to, um, to wave through life and, and not wallow in regrets. Uh, throughout your life, at some point, you, know, you just have to have to adjust and begin to to enjoy life uh, for for what it is. Yeah. So I say it again: it is not so much uh, about what happened to you, but your reaction to it that matters. So, and I'll say to everybody: with what is happening now with COVID, let us each learn our lessons either collectively or individually, and see what lessons there is for us in all these situations. The, the uh, Biafra Civil War, all the wars happening all over the world, Co uh, COVID, uh, what is happening now in America, uh, uh, where racism uh, um, you know, is now being uh, one of the uh, issues being debated, and even racism in this country. These are all um, bringing out you know, things that, um, that needs to be sorted out. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it has its own positive energy, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what we must not forget. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. That's how we deal with disruption through art. Exactly, <laughs> yes. So we can use our art and make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, for sharing this moment with me and with everyone who's listening. Um, if you want to follow Chica's work and see more examples, because it really is varied and it's, I mean, I'm biased, but he's madly talented, please visit his website at www.chikeazwanya.com. And we hope to see you next time in a version of the Evil Conference that isn't online where we can commune together again once more. That's my daughter. That's my daughter. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.